Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, this is episode two of We're Talking Friendly. Yeah. We actually have a new person here. I don't know temporarily or permanently, but would you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Alan. I am a person. Hi, Alan. Hi, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> what is the school? No, no. It's an AA meeting. <laughs> You tricked me! <laughs> I'm sorry, this is an intervention. This is for your own good. You have an issue, you have, you have problems. I'm pretty oh. awake now because I just burnt my tongue. Oh, <laughs> well, previously we were actually extremely tired, but I only did it just for the tea. Well, yeah, good so, morning, Sarah. Yeah. It's so, it's good like morning. about, like what? 1 a.m.? 12. It's 1 a.m. About 12.54. Yeah. 12.54? 1, 12 almost 1 o'clock. In the morning. This is our usual recording time. Yeah, that's true. If you really watch is. Asian Plays and we're typically recording around now. Yeah, and I got class in about five hours, so I'm just gonna book it and go... Now? Yeah. No, now not now. You. <laughs> 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 See you later. <laughs> Once this is all done, I'm going though. So, with the exception of Alan, since he was sort of a last minute edition, I asked everyone to bring some kind of topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll go last since I have a couple topics in mind. Okay. But... A couple topics. So we might not go through all of it. They honestly. also might be pretty short, so who knows? Yeah. So, uh, anyone want to go first? Sure. Pat wants Turns to <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> Pat. Turns. Does he have a. I've been holding this back for so long because the Death Note movie on Netflix just came out like two weeks ago, something like that. Pretty recently. At yeah. the time yeah. of this recording. At the t- yeah, at the time, the time of this recording, recording, it's been like two weeks since the Death Note movie on Netflix was released. And I've been holding back talking about it because I want to talk about it on the podcast. Well, actually, you know what? Hold back a little bit more. Uh, no. Because <laughs> have you go second. Mm, that's fine. As long as I get to talk about it. No, because like, th- there's a topic that's related to that. I want to like, go over. Explode. Because <laughs> like, actually, I'll ask you, Patrick. Hmm. What do you think an adaptation should be like? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it depends biggie. on the things they change. Because, like, an adaptation, if they want to be, like, 100% truthful, like, it's the same characters, the same setting, same everything, then they need to play, stay pretty true to the story, because then it's just like, why did you change it? What was the point of changing that? Because, hmm. like... So each change needs to have a point. Yes, exactly. Because if you change things, there needs to be a reason to the change. Otherwise, it's just pointless, and it just leaves, at least me, questioning, why'd you do that? Like... Kind of like with the Fantastic Four movie, which is another movie that I absolutely despise. Like one of the things which I always one? I thought it was good. Touche, the new one, the Fan newer Forstic. one with uh, Fan Fan Forstic, Forstic. as I like to call it. Is that with really the old? Michael B. Jordan, Mara Kate, something like that, not Mara Kate. I forget. What the, I forget the, the most name. recent one. The most yeah. recent one, because um, they changed one of the biggest things was they changed Johnny Storm to being black, but left Sue Storm white, and then. Begged a lot of questions, like, why did you change it? What, what purpose will that serve in the movie? Adopted. Exactly. It did serve the purpose of it wasn't Johnny that was adopted, it was Sue that was adopted. Oh. And the only thing that that added to the story was Reed being able to say, oh, I get what it's like not feeling like you belong in your family. And that's all that was for. Nothing else mattered about that relationship of her being adopted aside from that single line. Hmm. It's like, why would you make that change if it doesn't actually affect anything uh, but to be honest like that movie's bad for several other reasons oh yeah i'm just yeah. saying it's one of the reasons it's but a th- reason does someone's race really matter that much in the movie adaptation or uh, it, it depends, depends. It, yeah it, it, it highly depends especially in that situation since family is so important in the yeah. fantastic war you know that was something that, that kind of you know kind of relates to what i wanted to talk about today because mm-hmm. i wanted to talk about asian american inclusion mm-hmm. you know or what it's like, to, yeah. Or you know, like that was kind, kind of like a, what what everybody's experience was here growing up in America. You know, you know? sorry, as an Asian American, you know, and mm-hmm. what their culture really, how their culture differs or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a little tired. So really, I could explain it better, but it's but like, just not happening today. I feel like, like certain groups of Asians, the ones that people don't typically think of when they think of Asians, like Islanders, oh, I mean, Cambodian, Cambodian, Cambodian Filipinos, 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 Filipin
Yeah, I had time so to Yeah, to a degree. The, the non Orientals. Yeah, basically. Non <laughs> Oriental. Because, like, at least with the, the Asian races that people typically think of when they think Asian, they mm-hmm. actually get representation in movies. I have never seen a Filipino in a movie. <laughs> like, I've never seen a Filipino playing a Filipino in a movie. Hmm. Mm, and I've watched okay. a lot of movies. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it, it, it's weird because, like, uh, in Hollywood, it's dominated by mostly whites, and then it'll be like uh, African Americans are black, black, and then Latino, Latino, and then Asians are are like mostly extras. They're almost yeah. never the they're main the, character. They're the doctors. Yeah. They're the, they're the smart people. Technically, yeah. there was that one Asian guy in Power Rangers movie, but. That, that's the exception rule because yeah. that was all about diversity. Yeah. yeah, there are exceptions to the rule, but yeah. it's and a rule for a reason. In the Power Rangers movie, he was a. He wasn't even the like yeah. the main character out of the Power Rangers. Clearly, yeah. it focused on Tommy and yeah. Kimberly. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is the name? <laughs> but like, you you said like uh, the changes need to ha- um there needs to be a reason, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, you like the Marvel movies. I do quite like that. And most of the changes in the Marvel movies are kind of That's for true. no there, reason. There are a lot of for no reason changes there, but maybe it's just because I'm not familiar with the source material as much. So maybe that's part of the reason why I'm not as upset about it. I also feel like um, the uh, in the Marvel movies, they're just overall stronger movies. <laughs> that is also true. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Like they do write them just generally better than like say Death Note or Fan Four Stick. It's probably because the. Uh, it's not that it has to be really like a good adaption. It's more adaptation. like. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's the definition of adaptation? Sorry. Uh, is to have one source material be changed into a different medium. Ew. But like. But that's my definition. I, I did not make this up. <laughs> I feel like Death Note, like the Death Note Netflix movie, that right? That could have been good. It, it could have been, like, I think. Kevin, yeah, Kevin and I were talking about it. It could have been a good movie if it was just its own thing. Side note, I have I not don't... watched the movie. Yes, yeah, actually, there's a couple people here that watched the movie. It's really... It, Sarah's seen half the movie. She fell asleep halfway through and left me alone to watch the movie. Oh, we watched it. We watched Sarah, the Sarah, you asshole. Yeah. Hey, man. That's like every movie I watch. I fall asleep. Yeah, come and, on. And Anna here has not seen the movie. So you're having a blind perspective here. Yeah. But yeah, I have yeah. watched the anime. I mean, and read the manga. Well, well, actually, how many people here have watched the anime? Hello. I've, I've only watched the movie. You have not seen the anime. I know the about anime. it. I've seen like one part oh, of the live adaptation. Anime. I gotta show you the anime. It's so good. What about you, sir? Have you seen the anime? No. You have not seen the anime either. So two people who have not watched I the anime. I literally rewatched the anime like right after I watched the movie. <laughs> So we have a wide spectrum of like, like opinions it's, here. It's real fresh in my mind. Including a no opinion right there. <laughs> I'm on hey the yo. spectrum. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> no, the last oh. time I read or watched <laughs> Death Note was about 10 years ago. Damn. <laughs> Didn't Death yeah, Note no. come out about 2003? Uh, the anime ended in 2007, Seven. I believe. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. But I think the manga was definitely. The manga course, started in like 2003. Of course, earlier. Because. <laughs> So, um, in a while. Yeah, uh, so. Who's talking about back. cover first? <laughs> no, because uh, adaptation, I feel like that's important mm-hmm. to, to go into before we go into the like, Deadpool movie um, in Pacific. That's a good point. Uh, you said, um, so what's your opinion of a good adaptation? Okay. Uh, what does it need to do for yeah, a good adaptation? Yeah. Dragon Ball Z. Like I was saying, it does depend Shut on up. what they want. <laughs> it Shut does up. depend on what they want to do with the story. Like if they do change the setting, like in the event of Death Note, they actually need to take the setting into account. They need to like. I just want to just keep going back to Death Note. Well, because my one of my main problems with the Death Note movie is that the setting is almost irrelevant. Like. It could have taken or pl- change it to America. It has almost nothing to do with America. Exactly. It could have taken place almost anywhere in the world, barring them speaking English. The only requirement you would need for the movie to have taken place in a given location is that there's a waterfront where a Ferris wheel could be, and that's all you need. Now, I actually kind of want to go through a table with this. Like, um, Sarah, so like, what is your opinion of a good adaptation? What do you think an adaptation need to do in order for it to be good? You know that movie with, uh, what was his name? Tom Cruise. It came out recently. Live oh, um, Live, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, Edge or of Tomorrow. Or Live, Die, Repeat as they're trying to rename it. 
Yeah. Isn't that yeah. recent? That's weird, yeah. Oh, uh, that was a couple years ago. That was a couple years ago. Super recent. Oh, it's on DVD yeah. now. So I have no idea what that is about. I've never heard of that. Diary. So, um, for those of you who don't know, Edge of Tomorrow was a movie that came out 2015. <laughs> Do you want to say? Yeah, you got a computer. <laughs> Go ahead, keep going. Um, and it it starred Tom Cruise, and little not a lot of people knew, but it's actually based off a of manga. 2014. 2014. Yeah. I have read that manga. Yeah. It's, uh, it's based on a manga called All You Need Is Kill. Oh, is that? I yeah. didn't know. Yeah. It is. So, um, yeah, you actually have the manga in your comic shop. I keep seeing I'm just like, all you need is grammar is what you need. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's actually based off that manga, but um, the movie actually has almost nothing to do with the manga. Hmm. Really nothing. Yeah. Uh, Does it just take like the base concept? The very yes. base concept. The concept the, that he dies. And he comes back. He lives, he dies, he repeats. Yeah, because that's not the only concept they take. <laughs> the die. monsters don't back. look the same. The um the ethnicities aren't the same, the names aren't the same really. Um and the the plots the plots are actually completely different. Hmm. Even the nature of the movie is completely different. Cause in All You Need is Kill is more about the characters. While in Live Die Repeat, it's also about the characters, but it's more about the fight. Actually saving the world. Yeah, the mm. the fight yeah. between the aliens and them. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Is it a good movie? It's okay. Yes. It's okay. It's honestly, it's probably the best adaptation of a Japanese product I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> There's not a lot of. I didn't if we're even talking, know that was an adaptation. <laughs> yeah, if we're yeah. talking about just Japanese adaptations, that's probably the best one I can think of, aside from so things so being. Can you think? <laughs> I couldn't even think of a good one. Aside that's of not things that can. Terrible. The yeah. only things I know is uh, well, Avatar is not Japanese. Yeah, yeah. Not Japanese. Not not Japanese. Aside of things being, Neither you know, Avatar is Japanese actually yeah. inspired by, you know, I think it would have been more okay if, like, if Death Note was inspired by rather no. than it's supposed it's to a straight happen. adaptation. Yeah. Well, even if it's inspired by, it, it's still not a good movie. It's still, I know that's true, <laughs> but I'd be, I think I'd be a little less upset about it. Uh, you know what's a good adaptation? Hmm. Uh, Harry Potter? Any, any of the Harry Potter movies? I think there are people who would argue, but I think yeah. they're a, a small vocal minority. Um, I mean, they're good. They're pro- they're I, do en- I do quite enjoy them. Lord of the hmm. Rings, I feel like those are... I, Lord yeah. of the Rings are I, I agree. very good. Yeah. Um, to the extent of, I wish they didn't have the long sweeping shots that take up like... Two hours. 15 minutes <laughs> at well, least. To be fair though, the books are just as long. I know, it's yes. more of like, I wish they didn't include those because honestly, they don't do much for the story. I have well, one. they don't do much for the story, but it does a lot for the setting because it shows it you the scope of the true. world. That's true. It's I've, just, yeah. you know it's a Lord of the Rings movie when they have that shot. It becomes well, more what? But that's the thing. But the thing, that's so iconic to the Lord of the Rings movie. So true. Because <laughs> they do it in every fucking movie. <laughs> Stop complaining about it. <laughs> I don't like it. They did it in The Hobbit too. It, that's also Lord of the Rings. Yeah, exactly. I have never seen a single Lord of the Rings movie or read anything, nor Harry Potter. Well, uh, wow, except really? uh, wonderful magic animals found the fan. Well, fantastic beasts <laughs> and where to find them. There you yeah. go. Wonderful magic it wasn't animals even found. found. It's, I actually it's actually it, not even an adaptation. That's also bad. true. Yeah, the book wasn't written. It's. <laughs> Is that, I don't think there is a no. book in, within God. universe yeah. with that name, but it's not the movie is uh, is Stand itself alone. standalone, and the yeah. book itself is standalone. It's unique. They have nothing to do with each other, other than the fact that the book is in the movie. Yeah, okay. there's no there's no like Fantastic Beasts and where to find the book that you can just pick up and like oh I well, remember this actually, scene. The problem is now. I know. <laughs> there was, the there the was before. Was that it? that book was out before, was along it? with Quidditch, yeah. No, but was it? Did, it doesn't have the plot of the movie. Is what I'm saying. Oh, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could always pick up a Fantastic Beast and where to find them. I mean, that book was always out. Yeah, but that's yeah. like a. That's it's like more an encyclopedia. like a encyclopedia. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's what the book itself is within Quidditch. the Quidditch. You know, so, Quidditch or whatever it was called. So what? What you been? I know you don't ages. watch a lot of anime and movies. Well, but anime. What is, I've actually poor man started. Poor, poor yeah, man. I started my my anime list. I should do this. I just have a Google Doc. I don't know why I don't have in my anime list. So. Yeah, but you uh, you don't watch a lot of movies. So movies I don't know. No. Like, I don't know how many adaptations you've seen. But what do you think a good adaptation would need to do? Let, let's say like one of like some of your favorite animes that you like to watch. If there were to be adapted to a movie or a TV show, what do you think it would need to do? <sighs> Because that's a complete change of medium. Because people true. don't realize that when a, a complete change of medium happens, 
that they do need to make changes. Yeah. I guess for me, I sort of want like the start to at least have something to hold similar to it. Like maybe maybe all the characters have to be the, uh, like similar looking or like sim- similar acting or s- same personality and like none of the plot really changes near the beginning. But then when it gets close to the end, like the end, it, it really wouldn't have to matter if it changes that uh, too badly. Just as long as it starts off in the same story world setting and... Really? So you, you prefer, so you want it to start out the same, have the same exact characters, but end differently? Well, so like because like, in, I, I, in terms of my ideas of adaptation of a movie, I, I sort of want it to just be like its own reason to watch a movie. Because like, I know myself, I don't like rewatching things if the story's just going to be the same and I know what the end's going to be. But the, the thing is, it's an entirely new medium. Like, it's yeah. not going to be just, like, drawings. Yeah, because it's you, not just art, it's now... People. Yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. people. Because you have to keep in mind, like... It, it is a say, different experience. Let's say an anime. A one episode is already, like, 23 minutes, excluding, like, commercials and the opening. That's already 23 minutes. That's a third of the movie already. So like, or at least a quarter of the movie. Like one great example I think of like what you're talking about isn't even like an adaptation. It's just simply how it was done. The Full, full Metal Alchemist. Because the original Full Metal Alchemist series was being created so fast that it outpaced the manga. So they had to write a whole new story that's completely different from the manga. And that's why they made Brotherhood so they could follow it more closely. Right. And it was amazing. And it's basically what you're talking about, just not like a change in medium. And I know I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, know I don't like the original series ending. So yeah. I guess, to be honest, it's more just I don't understand the uh, whole definition of adaptation. Or at least, like, I've never experienced adaptation of something that I cherish. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, maybe I, we could find an example. Team but I'm not sure. Even, no, I didn't even watch that movie. Avatar? Uh, the Last Airbender? Yeah. Never watched that movie. Know about it, though. Good. <laughs> Never watch it ever. What I movie? didn't watch that either. Exactly. But, uh, but uh, how about the how about, how about with that? Like if Avatar was being made, well, Avatar is was it, made it into was a movie. Into movie. It was made into a movie. But like, how could they make it good? Like, how would it have made it a good movie for you? Hmm. Because I mean, like the Avatar movie was about uh, an hour thirty minutes long. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, it only covers the first book, I think. The movie does. Also true. Yeah, it only covers the first book, but it did that horribly because it skipped over important parts and kept in stupid parts and made weird changes. It made a lot of weird changes. Yeah. Well, it started off with our kid being a very terrible so actor <laughs> and also not actually being like... Our white boy being an Asian American. Not an Asian American. Yeah, Asian. no. Like, if they toss him like an actual Asian kid, maybe. But like, in terms of Hollywood, I can understand why they would do that. I just don't like the fact that they did that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I guess... Why, why was he like a white... Why were all the main characters guy? white? Why were all the villains colored? <laughs> We gotta get the Indians well, because they were not black. Yeah, they're all yeah, they're not all one race either. So yeah. exactly. So why are they all colored? Why the white people gotta be the heroes? Because yeah. so, Hollywood. There's almost there's literally no white people in fucking Last Airbender. So what the fuck? Like I don't know why Katara and Sokka you were. You mean Katara and Sokka? Sokka. <laughs> why were they white? They were esque. <laughs> why people. were they white? And then why was everyone else in the village Asian? <laughs> Was that? Was that yeah. was That's how it was. Their yeah. grandma was clearly Asian, and they're clearly white. It's 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 probably because they got water bending blood inside of them, man. Everybody it's in the village is water bending, except for like, soak and Yeah, I, honestly, I could I, I could oh, get away man. with the fact that you know, maybe maybe Ang was like Ang <laughs> the movie. Oh, okay, okay. The the time. Time. I guess in my. Okay, so, well, you, I, I can't name. say it, it really um, proves a point at all, who? but I would like it to be a little bit more, like, understandable or immersive for me. I want to be able to... So, get immersive. These, these are very, like, subjective terms you're tossing yes. out here. Um, so, okay, here's what I'm getting, is you don't care much about the plot, you want the setting and the characters. Yeah. yeah. You can't so, give me thumbs up. So, it's a fan fiction. Up. You want a fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's very basically true. what it is. It's, it's yeah. basically a re- re- rewriting as a fan fiction. Mm-hmm. A really shitty one, but it's no, effectively but, what it is. But I get what you mean now, because like you, the plot itself is, is that stuff you already seen before. So you would rather have a completely different plot, but have the same setting, uh, setting and characters. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a point a lot of people make on the internet. Yeah. That, it's, it's, it's also funny because I've never read any fanfics before. It's like, why would I watch the movie if it's going to be the same as the anime? I don't want to see the same thing over again. Because, yeah, that's really what they're going to do. It's going to look exactly the same. <laughs> All right. So what, what about you, Alan? I, I know we're throwing a deep end here. Yep. But, like, for you, what would an adaptation need to do in order for it to be good? Like, any adaptation that, uh, of an anime or a series that you like. What would need to do? I mean, you have you have a lot of examples of adaptations because you read a lot of light novels and they get oh yeah, they get, get, yeah they get made into an anime a lot of anime and stuff. stuff and men go yeah but I don't really think about it too much I just go yeah. along for the ride I just want to say really quick the the, the 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 problem with that comparison light novel to anime is like light novel is very static it's just a bunch of images and text yeah but then with anime to movie it's you literally have like shots that you can recreate, like movement for movement, if you really wanted to. Yeah, that's true. Well, like, but to go go on there, like, um, this this still changes from the light novel to the anime. Oh, of course, all the time. Expe- ex- especially like, um, uh, when they completely change the context for a lot of things. For instance, uh, the Spice and Wolf, uh, light novel. There's a, a lot of significant changes between that and the anime mm-hmm. that changes the context of a lot of things and the characterizations of a lot of things because. The light novel is a lot of talking. You can't completely translate that yeah, to the anime. Yeah, and like a, a lot of the details are destroyed. Yeah, a lot of yeah. details are missed, but they replace that with ca- uh, actual character personalities in the anime. Mm-hmm. Me like Wolf Girl. Because <laughs> um, are you lover? Part of the part of the problem with the uh, light novel to say anime is that like it's super different mediums. Yeah. Because like one, you're reading and you. Like, you get literally, literally every bit of nuance yeah. that you can possibly get out of text, but you don't get that as much in anime or manga because they're images, and you have to notice them to get the nuance. Yeah, so, like, so you, you don't really think about, like... Anime. I try to think of it as its, as its own thing mm. before I compare it when it's done, whatnot. All right, so... Um, That's fair. That's but, a good way to go at it, actually. But do you have an actual comparison? Like, let's say, um, I know you read the Sword Art Light novel, and you also watch anime, right? Yeah, I did. So, out of the two, which one do you think is better? Mm. I know they're completely different mediums, I but... I, I like the light novel only because I like to read, and I like to know all the details and stuff about what's going on in the background. The, um, Not just the main story. Then what would the uh, anime have would have done it, to make it... A better anime for you because d- just by that statement alone that means that the anime was not perfect obviously it wasn't perfect. obviously <laughs> yeah obviously it wasn't perfect i liked it i know it was not as great as it could have been yeah. i guess now, obviously it wasn't perfect so what could the anime have done in order to make it better for you um more episodes especially when you compare it to the more night episodes. Well, obviously. <laughs> well yeah most animes of light novels they're sped up for one instance, if you guys have caught up with Knights and Magic, which is being aired Knight. now. Yeah. Knights Possessive the and Magic. magic. Yes, Knights and Magic. <laughs> Knights and their and Magic. <laughs> yes. We own the and magic. That has been sped up significantly. Like, yeah, there he... has been no character progression, really. And oh, it's, just, what a shame. it's just like the action parts of the story, basically. Yeah, because you told me, like, the first episode went through, was it seven chapters? Huh. No, it almost went through, like, the first, like, half of the first volume. Yeah. Fuck, or something like that. I that's forget fast. how exactly. That's the first but... episode? Mm-hmm. Oh! Yeah. The, oh! The first episode Wait, is... no time, why don't you? <laughs> yeah, the first episode is an isekai, um... It's an isekai anime, which, mm-hmm. for those who don't know, are transported to another world anime. Yep. Ooh. Stuff like Sword Art is considered Isekai, Log Horizon, uh, Overlord, ReZero, Overlord, yeah. Overlord, and stuff like that. Lots of game examples in there. <laughs> it's mostly games. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's honest. a per- pretty popular one nowadays. Yeah. yeah Kon- uh, no Game in Life, Konosuba. Yeah. Um, but uh, Nice and Magic, they go through uh, his being transported 
His, he dies. His, of course. Yeah. The of first course. episode, not really spoilers. He goes, him being transported, his birth, childhood, school life, and then his... In the middle of his enrollment in that school, all in the first episode. Wait, in like the new world? In that yeah, the new world. world. Wait, yeah. no, wait, wait, wait. So they don't toss you into chapters. like a new body. They toss you into wait, a new baby. I body. can look it yeah. up right now. Wait, does he keep his memories? Yes, he keeps his memories. Wait, not entirely. There's actually in the anime. There's a statement that he says he doesn't entirely remember his old life in the old world. He knows he came from the old world. He just, he just doesn't, doesn't remember, remember it. it. Yeah, he still remembers everything about computer programming. Yeah, he just remembers <laughs> programming. <laughs> to, to, it's like ingrained in him now. That's, yeah. uh, that scenario is similar to actually, um, what's what's the one about like the some business dude dies because like someone else pushes him onto the bus? Oh, uh, um, you just think Yeah. Yeah, you just think it. Or There's Tanya Sagas are evil. That's what, yeah. I was like, why do I know this one? <laughs> yeah. Was that one any good? It was, all, it was all right. I actually watched it. Um, if Got you better. could, oh well, yeah, it's better. Oh. Uh, here's the thing: if you could ignore that the main character a is a girl. grown man inside a little girl's body, it is actually a compelling story. Really? It's, yes. it's actually huh. a compelling story. You say when just brought him back as like a general guy. Yeah, it's, it's a really a weird girl. hook. <laughs> no, it, it's actually a compelling story a about political tensions, uh, a reflection of the situation between World War, World War II. And Germany, hmm. and uh, actual um, battle tactics, and how war was treated back then. Hmm. It just so happened that the main character is yeah, inside a little girl. girl. <gasps> well, that was Weird. the hook. Yeah. Gotta make. That is the hook. Animators yeah. love something. Animators. <laughs> I mean, like, who likes little girls, right? Am I right? But uh, but yeah, even then, uh, you know, Psyche, I actually consider that a good adaptation, because. Um, hmm. They <clears throat> changed a lot of stuff in the light novel that I did not like about the light novel. Mm. One was the character designs, because their uniforms made everyone look the same. <laughs> uh. That was a really small one. And two is they added a bunch of symbolism in the anime that they could not in the light novel, because it was all text. Mm -hmm. But uh, in um, the anime, they added a lot of symbolism for Christianity and religious symbolism, oh. because it's all about how the main character does not believe in God. So God... Okay. Um, punishes him. Punishes him because he he literally shows himself towards him and he's like, I still believe in you. Damn. I because like you may be omnipotent, but you're not a god, basically, because mm. you don't do enough for this world. Mm -hmm. So I can't consider you god. You're more like a devil. Defiance. Yeah. Defy him. So yeah. he's like, so he, he punishes. So he basically punishes him and sends him to th this world huh. for some reason. Yeah, well, he has a reason. I, I was to punish him and then try to convince him that he yeah, is the God exists. who he is. Yeah, or to have faith. Um, I won't spoil the entire thing because I actually kind of recommend it. And if you can get over the, that he's a little girl. That he's a little girl. If you can get over that, um, then I would actually recommend it. So I won't go into it. But they have that religious symbolism in there. And there's lots of really good camera, um, um, uh, camera work in the, uh, in the anime. Hmm. Their framing is actually really, really good in the hmm. anime. Interesting. But, um, we'll be on that, that, I consider it a good adaptation because it uses the other medium effectively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good adaptation to you, Alan. <laughs> uh, like, so it's also for you, it, for you, the devil wasn't in details for you. You, you would rather have something when it's adapted to have everything in there. That's what it makes it seem like. You don't care about how long it is? It, it, you want everything? Uh, not too sure, because obviously... You, you haven't thought about it Yeah, lot. not uh, too much. But maybe. It would have to... I would have to see an adaptation that had more yeah. details and stuff. Mm. Yeah, which is probably never going to happen. Yeah. Dude, yeah, that's that's obviously yeah. never going to happen, so... Like points to be incredibly but hard to write. Going off of what you said, it would have to change... The changes would have to play to the uh, strengths of the new medium. Yeah. And yeah. that would make it better in the sense that it's, it's the new medium. Yeah, that's actually why I'm not excited for the Full Metal Alchemist movie. Because mm -hmm. like, I don't feel like the alchemy will play well on... Like, in as live CG. action. Yeah, and, and yeah in live action. Because it just looks cooler animated. But seeing it in real life, the way they've been doing it, just... I'm not sold. That's Look. like the uh, One Piece... Yeah, it's going to be a One Piece adaptation. Oh no, that's not going to be good. Yeah. It's going to be like... It's oh, too stylized. It's going to be it's like Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> like, the, the, the art style is way too stylized for it to transition well. 
Yeah. It's not gonna be good. I, I can't wait to see. There's gonna be a Usa. One Piece adaptation. Oh, there's gonna no. be a Naruto adaptation. Oh no. Oh, that one could work. I, I could see that. I mean, working. yeah, with yeah. some Depending on what they do. explosions and stuff. The only Maybe. one I couldn't see is One Piece. Yeah, yeah it's like, way too is. stylized. Yeah. I, can, oh, I just wanna oh, see I'm Usopp's just... nose. <laughs> I'm just imagining it's like that will not look good. Has, any, has anyone know. seen the Yuroni Kenshin live action? I that, have. I wish that's good. good. I yeah, think I it's good. Like, no, there you go. You haven't seen an adaptation that you really like. Now that I think about it, I yeah. like that one because it, it was close enough that it brought out the speed that uh, uh, was Kenshin had in the manga. Because mm. he was spo- supposedly the like fastest yeah. swordsman, and it, mm. and they did that k- pretty well in the live action. You Ooh. know, a live action that I really liked, uh, GTO's crazy. the drama. Yeah, yeah, the drama was really good. GTO. I really enjoyed it, and then Gokusen was the same. I forget what it, I forget what it stands for. Great teacher only to go. Oh, okay, that's that's off of what I was thinking. Because the, the yeah. GOT, not GTO. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of no, but with those two adaptations, it's mostly about the characters. Yeah. So I, I think that's another point for adaptation is you have to know the strengths of the original source material. It's true. So for GTO, it was mostly about the characters itself. The fact that it was an anime and the, the gags in it were not the, as important as the characters and how they developed throughout the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Onizuka is like the the real main part of like, he's the heart of the anime. Yeah. Like without him, like it just wouldn't be the same. It would just be some like generic. Like, His name is also the anime. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's like having Naruto without Naruto. Yeah, and but... like and like Gokusen too, which is like I don't know if you guys have ever read it, but no, it's, it's about this teacher who another teacher anime. Yeah, yeah. Wow. which I you know, there's a trend here. But <laughs> Maybe she... it's more relatable and easily <laughs> like, produced. She, she might you might like anime. She's <laughs> the granddaughter of like uh, a yakuza boss. Okay, Ooh. and so she has to keep that like under wraps because she doesn't yeah. want to get fired from her job. <laughs> Because she's still kind yeah, of yeah, in sense. the Yakuza, you um, know, because mm-hmm. she's, like, the granddaughter. She, so she has to, like, kind of do business on, yeah. on the slide. Gotta keep, gotta keep, what is it, on face? The good yeah. face? Yeah. <laughs> Get the download. But, like, that one is also really good. The manga is not so good, and it doesn't end very well. But, like, the, the drama, the first season is pretty strong. Yeah. And then the other ones are kind of the same. So. Yeah, but but that's one of the things. Like you have you have to play to the strength of the actual source material and the medium. Because what you said earlier about Alan about the the Real and Kenshi adaptation, it the reason why the adaptation was so good is because it kept the action mm-hmm. that the original anime and manga had, mm-hmm. and more importantly, it kept the speed. Because it because when you translate uh, stuff from anime to live a- uh, live action. One of the biggest problems I've seen is like the actual speed of the action. Yeah, stuff really slows down in live action for yeah. some reason. Not in the Yurana Kenshin one. It yeah, keeps it's pretty yeah. That's, yeah, that's why it was such a good adaptation. The the speed kept up in the entire... Um, how many movies was it? It was... I think it's three. Yeah, three. Th- the, 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 all the movies. Mm-hmm. It, it kept that speed and it was impressive throughout and it was yeah. easily watchable and uh, it played to the strength of the original and to the adaptation. Mm-hmm. I notice a, a number of live actions like to dial back like the intensity or strength of certain things. Mm. Like going back to Avatar The Last Airbender, the movie, for some reason they made Earthbenders really freaking weak. Yeah, even like, though like when you see them in the show, it's like, they're damn. so terrifying and powerful in the show. Well, betting in general terrible. were weak in the... Um, it's true, yeah. Yeah, in the movie. Because like the like airbending was at best, like light pushes. Yeah, airbending was light pushes. Water did not have the tidal wave yeah. effect. It didn't have the worst it's, effect either. Especially at the, the, the battle at the Northern Water Tribe yeah. where like Aang alone makes a colossal tidal wave. Yeah, and then they, like... Firebending was so weak because they never had like a single like giant burst of yeah, fire. They never like shot fire from their fit their fist. They always had like this like little like flame like to the side that they drew the fire from. It's like what is this weak bullshit that you're doing here? Mm, yeah. that's they weird. dialed back the strength and intensity of all the bending. It was <laughs> all stupid. The, all the that earth was, benders. That's a major part. It took like five earthbenders to move like one man-sized no. rock. It took five earthbenders to move one rock and another earthbender to push it. That's true, yeah. And it didn't even move fast. It was, so slow. it was like at a walking speed. One thing that movie bended 
was my point of view, man. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah. You, you, you okay you, there? You, you could have done something. There, there could have been something clever there, but you lost it. <laughs> no, just like their views. Yep. <laughs> I don't even... I'm pretty sure it flopped even... Oh, the movie? Yeah, it flopped so fucking hard. So People are very harsh on that Because it's terrible. Because yeah. the original... It's an adaptation really that basically spits on its source material. It's true. It's true. That's another thing. If it's an adaptation, can't insult the source material. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out, like, where did these movie adaptations come from? Like, is it like some fan who... Money-making who... schemes no, it's, from Hollywood. Exactly that. It's, it's it's Hollywood going, oh, there's a lot of people watching this right now. Maybe we should make a movie and cash in on that. Yeah, it's one of those things where you already have a set audience for it. Like, yeah. uh, like they will that, see it no matter what just because exactly. it is that. Yeah, there are people who will just see it no matter what, and there are people who will see it out of curiosity. And because they already know the, the source material, it's easy to go into because you know what it's yeah. about. It's exactly. also easier to reproduce because you don't have to write much. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, so generally, that's what quick and easy schemes. It really is just a make money quick scheme. No, <laughs> that n- almost never works. No. Almost. So now that we've gone through the tables, um, overall thoughts of what makes a good adaptation, Patrick, hmm? would you like to? <laughs> <laughs> you finally get to go over. I can finally complain. Like do, do it. I can do finally do complain. Do the movie. Go, 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 go. Oh man, I don't even know where to start. I have so many okay. complaints. Okay, <laughs> let's start with characters. <laughs> with that. I, I no, I think it's fair to start with the beginning. Yeah, of in course. honesty, because um. What was it? Where am I gonna go with that? Um, I noticed because I knew I was gonna hate the movie going in. Oh, oh! Spoilers for the Death Note Netflix <laughs> movie. <laughs> you better watch out, guys. Uh, please leave now if you would want to watch it later yeah, exactly. and for then come reason. back to this. But um, yeah, uh, I noticed, especially after having rewatched the the series after watching the movie, a lot of my complaints about the movie actually also apply to the anime. But it doesn't hurt it as much because they frame it differently. And I'll get to that uh, as I reach those points in the movie. Uh, which is going to be pretty soon. Uh, so, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, the movie opens with, like, uh, he's doing someone's take-home test. Like, what the fuck it's, is the point the of that? Own, it's he's doing it someone's take-home test. Like, oh, it's supposed to mean, oh, he's really smart. He's doing someone's test no, he's just for jump. money. He's just a What's jump. the point of that? It's <laughs> a you could easily tell what was the point of that scene. It was just to make, just to show the audience, oh, he's smart. It's more of they could have done s- anything else yeah. to make him seem smart. Like right, they okay. could have like been, they could have like just come back from taking the SAT or like getting their SAT scores or something. It's like, oh, you scored like seven hundred. I don't know. I never took the SAT. Uh, I I don't remember if they changed it. No, yeah, it's twenty four hundred. Where is it? It was. Didn't they change it to like 1600? Yeah, I think they took out the essay portion. So effectively, that's right, so oh, 1600. It could have effectively just been, oh, you scored stupid high on SAT? Wow, man, that's really They could cool. have just gotten the test back and it be could, like 100. It, too. <laughs> and any number of things to make it seem like Light's a really smart guy with upstanding morals. <laughs> Instead, Instead of, of shady ass morals of doing other people's homework. <laughs> which made no sense. For to money. That's, that's one of many weird changes. <laughs> And then, just like in the anime, the uh, the Death Note falls in falls into the into the human world within like three minutes, like stupid quick. Yeah, it, it, it's literally the beginning. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, one of the reasons starts everything. Exactly, but one of the reasons why I believe that it doesn't hurt the anime as much as it does the movie is because in the anime, it literally just drops outside the window of Light's classroom. Literally anyone could have seen it and picked it up. It just so happened to be Light. But in the movie, it literally lands next to him. <laughs> on the floor next to him, just like, oh man, I wonder what's that? Like, what? <laughs> what was the point of that? <laughs> Cause like in somebody's edgy journal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cause like in the anime, it feels more of like I said, it could have been anyone. A like, coincidence. It, yeah, it's just a huge coincidence. It literally could have been anyone, but in the movie, it seems predestined to be light. Cause honestly. Who, wh- why wouldn't he be the first one to get that death note? It literally is next yeah. to him. Yeah. It does. It's less. It less seems that like Ryuk was just bored and putting it in the world, and more like he's like, I'm gonna choose that guy. He gets it. Well, 
Well, okay, so, um, but in the movie, it seems like the way the Death Note, or the purpose of the Death Note, is completely different from what the anime was, uh, the, the purpose of the anime. Because, uh, in the anime, um, the purpose of the Death Note was for the Shinigami, um, to expand the, um, their life by killing other people, basically taking their that life. That's true. But in, uh, in the movie, they never bring that up. It, it, it seems almost like Ryuki is just fucking with everyone. Yeah, kind of. So, like... They're chaos. That, that's one change that I didn't mind that mm. they didn't bring up because it doesn't really do much for the story, no, honestly. It, yeah, it doesn't, but like... It just, I, it just gives more lore to the Death Note more than anything. Yeah, but I feel like that... That might have been able to play this strength. I, I also agree with you, it's a bad change. Yeah, it's a really weird change. <laughs> it's a bad change, but I feel like... Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's a lot, but I can almost see what they were trying to do. Mm-hmm. Is the fact that Ryuk is the true antagonist of the story. I'm Technically gonna, true. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's just fucking with Light. And the, re- and the reason why he specifically chose out Light is because he knows that he's easy to fuck with. <laughs> yeah, based on the guy's personality through the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah he is. Okay. Oh, oh God, I, feel, I feel a burp, but I don't want to come out. <laughs> Um, what's it? After that... You have a like, whole list of this? He, he, he took... The so, like I said, uh, I, I went, Oh, no, I didn't get to say it. I, cut, I, I think we went on a tangent. Uh, when I sat down to watch the movie, and I knew I wasn't going to like it, so I made sure to have my tablet open on a Google Doc so I could take notes while watching. Did you t- title it your death notes? <laughs> <laughs> no. no I'm, I, c- I could have easily, but I didn't. But, uh... And by the time, to- by the end of the movie, I had about five pages worth of notes. Just stop. I'm not gonna go over every single point. Just the important point. Yeah, yeah largely, yeah. Uh, like they try to like endear him to us a little, a little after he gets a death note because like Mia's suddenly being harassed by the school bully and he like he tries to defend him, but he just comes off as a colossal asshole. <laughs> Because, like, he talks about how the bully comes from, like, a dysfunctional family. And, and he's how, been held back. And, and he's been held back, and he's taking it out on other people. It's like, dude, what the fuck is your deal? But, like, I, like he's trying to bring that up because he knows that the bully is over 18. So it's like, oh, if you punch me, I'm a minor. You'll be more trouble than I am. It's like, this is just, you're just a fucked up dude. <laughs> just back the fuck up. Yeah, that's another point against it, of course. Because... <laughs> Because the thing about that scene is not only does it make like Light seem like a complete asshole, but it also he also makes him socially incompetent. Yeah, that too. Like he doesn't know how to act in social situations. Yeah, which no again etiquette. Which again, I can almost see what they're trying to do mm. by making Light more socially incompetent by making him more relatable to the audience. Again, I don't know that's if that makes not him relatable. Really. You gotta, no. Okay, more sympathetic to the audience. Go. More sympathetic to the audience because. Then you can have a more, a more relatable main character That's as true. opposed to the light in the Who's just this the perfect series. pretty boy. Who's the perfect narcissistic pretty yeah, boy yeah. And, um, who wants to be God. But wasn't that the point of having him be, you know, kind yeah. of narcissistic and yeah, but pretty? The, is that, that he was destined to be a great person. Yeah. But like, um, uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, like, death note kind of corrupts because absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that was like kind of the point. Yeah, it's it like, is the point like, of the anime, but like even the most perfect people can be. It's just manipulated. that point is that point is lost. That point movie. is lost. It, it's one of those things where I feel like a good adaptation should know the source material well, and that is one of the main problems of this adaptation. <laughs> it does not know the source material and what they were oh, trying to do. It kind of spits on it. <laughs> I saw a side by side comparison of the anime and the movie where they show when they first see Ryu and how to, different about to, it was. I was about to touch on that. Because uh, soon after he defends Mia, uh, he gets knocked the fuck out because why wouldn't he? Because <laughs> <laughs> the bully punches him because he was being stupid. Yeah. Yes. And then Mia turns him in. Mia, by the way, is the, the movie's uh, version of Misa Amane. And she's a shitty, shitty character. <laughs> she, her. She's a completely different character. She's not yet. Yeah, she's more like anime light than Light Turner, the main character, is. So it's just like, what the fuck? Oh yeah, Light <laughs> turned into Light Turner. By yeah, the way. that's true. I mean, that's one of the things that like I don't mind so much in the, in the it, movie the the name changes because yeah. honestly, it just would have been fucking weird if they didn't change that. <laughs> He's a white person named Light Yagami. <laughs> you know, and a white America. boy in Seattle named Light Yagami. <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> I'm convinced. But. Yeah, because, um, 
they completely changed Misa's character. 100%. She, she was not even anywhere similar. Which, uh, I actually saw a video talking about, like, how, um, well, how they describe, like, uh, Misa, how they justified the, uh, Misa's character mm-hmm. by saying, like, she is pretty much the same character, but because of how different Light is, she takes on a different role. That's not it. Which what? I completely disagree with. <laughs> Nothing like Misa. Not even close. But, um, yeah, so Mia turns in, turns in Light to the principal because I don't fucking know. <laughs> See, no, no, no. The reason for that scene is an exposition dump. You get an exposition dump five minutes in the movie. That, that should tell you how the movie's gonna be. <laughs> it just didn't make sense to me. Like, bitch, he was defending you. Why would you turn him in? If anything, take him from the, the infirmary. He was brought to the infirmary first, but yeah. still. And like, and then like later on, like it, it's even worse because then you get even more like forced exposition. Yeah. Yeah. So there's right. a ton of forced exposition. So, Force yeah. stuff from which, what I'm hearing. Yeah, there's a ton of force exposition, which is unfortunate, by, uh, but for two reasons. One, it makes the movie clunky. Yeah. And two, it actually doesn't need it. Really it doesn't. Because <laughs> um, if there's one thing I can tell about the movie, that even though it does not fit the movie, uh, the camera work is good. That's fair. Yeah, the camera is work good. is pretty good. It doesn't fit the mood of the movie at all. Dude, it, it, tone and mood are all over the place. I don't even know if it's good. I think it's just average. No, but, but what I mean by that is um, they foreshadow a lot of stuff just by the camera work. It's true. For uh, for instance, later on in the movie, um, which we'll probably be getting oh, into. Oh, spoiler! <laughs> um, this whole thing. It was not that spoiler. far later. Yeah, not for that far later on. Is when Light and his dad were having dinner at the table. Yeah. And uh, before they were having dinner at the table, they actually have a shot of the fa- their family pictures uh, with Light and his entire family with the mom. But when you just cut back to the table, the mom's not there. Yeah. That shows you how the family has changed. Because the, uh, the father and son are di- all completely distant from each other. The mom isn't yeah, there anymore. Yeah, they're also on opposite sides of the table, I yeah. think. The, it's complete silence and it's a very uncomfortable shot. It shows that, the mom, that because of the mom's gone, it completely distanced this character. And that's, what, that's why they're so different. But then they ruined that by dumping exposition all I over know. it. I <laughs> know. Dad, I hate you because you let my you, our, you let our, mom die. Yeah. And then earlier on, like light, I know that you are a dysfunctional child because your mom died. Yeah, I but know. I can't let you get away with this. Exposition. All right. So uh, he goes to the principal's office. He gets detention, and then I I don't think it cuts back. To, no, it doesn't cut back to the the house quite no. yet. He he meets Ryuk first. So uh, he gets detention, and that's when. He meets Ryuk, because he's like investing in the Death Note now. You know, and I think this is what the movie does pretty well, is like not really revealing Ryuk. Like... I do, I do like that they kept Ryuk in the dark a lot, but I don't like they never showed his face like plainly. I just yeah. wanted to know what he looked like! You know, but even when they showed his face... Um, I thought, you know, I thought they did pretty well. I don't know, some people don't, don't like it, because I, I, I recently watched a video today, a two hour long... You actually stop. watched it? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. just audio. No. I don't know what talking oh, about. it's mostly audio? It's the YMS video with yeah. his friend, right? Yeah. Did you yeah, watch movie it? Sucks. I, I did this. Org, by the way. <laughs> yeah, a great YouTuber, if you actually have not seen He's it. Good. He's got some good shit. Yeah. He's yeah. really funny. Wait, YMS? Your movie sucks. Your movie, movie sucks. sucks. Dot org. Dot. <laughs> yeah, literally, dot org. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, he brings up like th- that change hurts um, uh, hurts the movie a lot more than you would think because uh, even though it the feel is correct mm-hmm. that Ryuk is his ominous character and everything like that, he has no reason to be in the dark all the time. Yeah, no one can see him. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah, invisible. Yeah, he's invisible to everyone, and they even changed that rule to Death Note. Where it's only, an arbitrary, arbitrary change. Where only the owner can see him. Uh, meaning only Light can see Ryuk. Even when other people touch the Death Note, no one else can see the Ryuk. Until ownership changes. Yeah. The only they will, only Light will see him. Yeah. So like, literally, there is no reason for Ryuk to hide. That is a change that hurts the movie a lot more than you would think because it yeah. makes no sense. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so Light meets Ryuk after investigating the note, 
And then one of the best scenes in the fucking movie happens screams where Light just other. fucking screams his head off and he's panicking the whole time. <laughs> Backing up. And man, is it just so funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, I kind of, I see where they're going with it because it's a very, I think it's a very technically realistic reaction. Cause like, like, completely different from the anime. Yeah, it would be, it'd be fucking terrifying to meet a death guy. <laughs> no, but... Oh that, God! No, but that, again, a change from... For those who will complain, I know there will be complaints if uh, people watch this where you shouldn't compare this on, on this to the anime. It's gonna happen. I always hate that argument like, oh, you shouldn't compare it. Brother, it's based off of it. Of course it's gonna but, be compared. But the quote that um, the, the two hour uh, vid- uh, video about the movie, if you don't want it to be compared to the actual source material, don't adapt the source material. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't, cause- It's the stupidest argument. It, the uh, you should have just made a movie if you don't want it to be compared. You should have just made a movie inspired by the Death Note. Yeah, make it like a more modern take of the Death Note with like different. completely different rules because they change most of the rules anyways. Yeah. <laughs> completely different characters, completely different rules, and make and make the story that you want to the the meaning that you want to tell more apparent. Take rather, the setting into account, please. Yeah, take the setting into account. Make the uh, make this um. The story you want to tell more apparent instead of having this clusterfuck of a movie that is the Death Note adaptation. Woo! But yeah, so like meets Ryuk and he panics and like it's so much better in the anime to me because like it really plays into like what kind of character and person Light is because like in the anime Light does freak out initially. He For falls like two off seconds. His, yeah, he yeah. falls off his chair. He screams like very genuinely, and then he realizes what's happening and he says. I've right. been waiting for you. Yeah, because he knows that he will appear. That's exactly. part of the world's death note. Because, like... If the <laughs> death note was real. Yeah. Because, like, it wouldn't just show up. There's got to be something to this. And he knows that it's going to be a death god. So when he says, sees Ryuk, he, he, he fully expected it. He didn't know what he would look like. That's why he was scared. But he knew exactly what was going to go down. Now he knows the power that he has. But he then has light, the power. And then, but then Light turns the dumb fuck kid <laughs> just happens to have a death note. And then, what's it? One of the things that really, really bugged me about the way that Ryu got him to use the Death Note was that somehow, in Light's inf- not infinite knowledge, in his knowledge, his, his wisdom, manages to convince himself, like, yeah, Ryu's right. I am in a dream. If I write this kid's name down in the note, he'll be fine. Uh, that's how he convinces him? I, I, think, I think the movie is trying to be funny there. Because there's lots of funny yeah, quote yeah. moments in that scene. There- I don't, not necessarily that scene, but there's one moment in the movie that I didn't think was pretty funny. Like, I remember he was talking, I think with Misa, Misa, Mia. And then, like, Ryuk remarks something, and then, like, light without even looking, just like, shut the fuck up, Ryuk. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Because there's a scene where, like, um, Ryuk is like, you should write his, uh, his name in the book, the bully. You should write his name in the book. He's like, I don't have a pen. And then Ryuk oh, brings yeah. out a pen. And then, like, Good thing like, you have a pen. <laughs> Good thing you have a pen. And then, like, what the fuck? Yeah, that really just ruins any sort of tone that they possibly established. Good, like, it doesn't know what kind of movie it wants to be, totally. Mm-hmm. Is he it, in a school? Yeah, he's he in is. school. He's in detention. He's, he's still in detention. Left and never came back. Yep. There should be pens. That too. Or pens. <laughs> That's a good point. He is in he's school. He's in a classroom. <laughs> It should be pens. He's he like in a science lab, I think. So most definitely, they're gonna have pens in there. Yeah. <laughs> he has his backpack, does he not? Dude, in the I after, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So. It might have been confiscated. After like Ryuk comes in and everything, <laughs> like the room is totally trash. Like you can't yeah. tell me the that like. comes back like the fuck happened. Mm-hmm. Where's Light? <laughs> <laughs> like you can't tell me he he wouldn't have been in more trouble. Right. But yeah, so he writes down the bully's name in the death note and says that, he says, like, bully's name, decapitated. Why decapitated? More of, like, nothing else, just decapitated, like, nothing leading up to that. Yeah, it's weird considering, like, how in-depth they go into all the other kills in the movie. uh, Yeah, that too, but, like, in the anime, like, he, Light is so fucking thorough with what he writes in the death note, like, it's just, it really just shows, every time he writes in the death note, when he's not just writing people's names, it just shows how fucking smart this guy is, and how everything he thinks is like a plan. So I think I think the out. smartest thing I saw about the the Death Note uh, anime mm-hmm. compared to this movie is that 
when he when light starts becoming more uh into the role of kira mm -hmm. um he starts staggering the death in the actual notebook yeah in order to have this happen while he's at school so he has an alibi always he covers he, he makes he covers his tracks even when he's not even sure if people are trying catching on to him just in case exactly because yeah. he's mm -hmm. just that smart because <laughs> like, like the uh that one thing that's completely lost in this adaptation is that the characters do not think about their actions oh at my all. God, I have a huge complaint about that later on. <laughs> like, we'll go more into it when we get there. Yeah. But like, the care like in the uh, in the anime, the care um every action means something. Yeah. But very purpose. little things. Are, yeah, very little happens. That's just just done just to be just to do. Really. Yeah. And like in, in the movie, like sure every action does something, but no one has ever th no one thought it through. Exactly. It always happens and it always backfires for some weird reason. So even when it is something that's thing. even when it is something that's like thought through, quote unquote, it's not even that well thought through. I'll cover that later. Yeah. <laughs> but like uh, so after he writes the bully's name in the death note, decapitation. It's very it's very polarizing, it seems. I've heard people really like it, I've also heard a lot of people hate it. The, the, the like, Final mm. Destination-esque chain of events that leads to the said decapitation. Yeah. Like, so, it starts with, like, this high schooler walking down the street. He, like, he drops his basketball and bounces across the street. He doesn't bother looking both ways. He just runs out like a fucking middle schooler. And, like, the person who's driving down the street swerves. And it causes another car to swerve that has a stepladder on it. He crashes into something. Stepladder falls. And the stepladder falls and hits the dude in the head. Not only does it hit him in the head, it cuts his head clean off. What the fuck is the stepladder doing sharpened? And what is his head made of? It's funny because... WWE stepladder sharpened for death. I know, what the fuck? It's funny because like Final Destination actually has a kill almost exactly like that. I don't doubt that at it's all. It's with logs, isn't it? They have two of them. Yes! One I with logs, one. one with logs, and another one with a surfboard. Yeah, yeah! A surfboard? Yeah. yeah. And it happens the same exact way, where the cars crash, and then the thing unlinks uh, and just shoots ahead, and then it decapitates someone. You know, I could believe it with logs. I, I, I have a hard time believing step it ladder. with a step. <laughs> oh yeah, with a step ladder. With a step ladder or a surfboard, to be Man, honest. Surfboard. That thing is completely blunt. Yeah. It's not even as hard as a step ladder or a fucking log. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think, because like, it just doesn't have the material. What if the maybe, maybe the the person uh, writing the um, Death Note movie, they're trying to secretly make it into the Final Destination movies. That, that like. After that scene, my first thought was, is this directed by the Final Destination director? Because I swear to God, no, I really? believe it would be, but it's, it's not. It's directed by the dude that did Blair Witch. That's right, yeah. The yeah, new one, that. and then uh, some other, like... Um, it was The Guest and uh, something else. I forgot. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, Adam Wingard, which uh, a lot of people don't like. A lot of people, uh, Some people like, but a lot of people don't like him. Mm -hmm. Not only for this movie, but <laughs> like, uh, but like, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna briefly go through this while before you continue. Cool. There's a thing about this movie where I see where they're trying, what, what they're trying to do, and uh, I see the message that they're trying, uh, they're trying to show. Mm -hmm. It's just buried beneath a shit movie. Yeah, yeah, really. I, I can, I think I know where you're going, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, because like, um, we'll we'll go more into it when he actually starts becoming. When Light Turner actually starts becoming Kira, Kira yeah. but they they take the way Kira was done in the uh, in the anime completely differently into the movie, because the purpose and the meaning of Kira in the movie is n completely different from the yeah. anime. It is not like he's justice in uh in the anime. It's more of like he's a force to be reckoned with in the movie. So like a terrorist. He Kind of, yeah, a little bit. Sort of, yeah. No, honestly, sort of, yeah. Terrorist just for criminals, but still technically a terrorist. Yeah, because like they never, they never bring him up as like a global force in the um, uh, in the movie, which he he is, but like they never really bring it up. But they they, they touch on it. They they touch on it, but it, he is. They show him more as a, uh, they show Kira more as like this is a force that we should fear. And that's why crime is going down. Yeah. As opposed of, this is 
our version of justice. And whether you agree with it or not, this is what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Which is what the anime, uh, what the anime showed. Which is why in anime you can see both sides. But yeah. weirdly enough, in the movie you don't see both sides. Yeah. You only see Kira for good. You never see any of his deaths actually end up badly. Yeah. Or like how, or see people fear Kira. Yeah, because part of that, the way they wrote it, they never really have Light kill someone like in his own defense. Yeah. Like to protect, his, like to protect his identity to cover his tracks. The only time it happens is when Mia does it for him. Yeah. Which that's a little bit over. That's yeah. a scene that's, that's stupid. later. <laughs> stupid, but it's later. All right. By the way. We should probably speed up this go through. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna speed up in a bit. So we get to the house. The the, the thing that you were talking about when he's mm. at the table, and like super fucking angsty and disrespectful, and then which is annoying as shit. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, Light is a little shit in this movie. He really is. So no redeeming qualities. He really, he really does it honestly, because like uh, again, I see what they're trying to do that he develops about the movie, but. At the end of the movie, really I don't doesn't. like him any better. Yeah. <laughs> really he doesn't really develop much. I don't like any of the characters. He has a sudden personality shift at the end of the movie. Yeah. No, but the even that doesn't help. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, uh, I don't know that. any of the old one or, like, uh, the actual anime itself. Hmm. So I can't really say I can judge this one or, like, dislike something just because it's different. Actually, I don't like it. Okay, you know? I was going to ask you. But that, that's a good point. Like, you have not seen the anime, so you really can't compare it. What don't you like mo about the movie? Not going to scenes, but what don't you like about the movie? I didn't even yeah. watch the movie. No, no, no he did. I, 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 I watched the movie. It's just like so much shit could have been done so much easier. They just convoluted so many parts. Like, um, I don't even know how to explain it at this point. It's just sorry. Go. <laughs> they just make it so confusing when it could just be so simple. Like how you guys brought up the whole, you know, he has to be doing someone else's homework. Uh, I, I yeah. guess they brought up that part because they want to show off him being evil in that sense. Evil. It's, or, a, it's a really no. weird way to endear us into, to a character. Yeah. It's not endearing. It's like, this is our protagonist. You want us to think he has bad morals already? Yes. Light isn't really portrayed as a bad person, though. Which is weird. Okay, that like, too. Because he's not portrayed as a bad person like the anime. Because at the anime, they make every character kind of morally ambiguous. Yeah. But in, with, with a few like exceptions. Zone, mostly. Yeah, yeah they're, they're all kind of gray zone. We're, but uh, in the movie, even though, like, when you think about it, Light is a morally weird character. It really is. The movie doesn't portray him like that. He, they always portray him as he's in the right. Mm -hmm. He is good. And yeah. that is all he can do. He is the light. He's just of a this person world. in an unfortunate situation. Yeah. Which he really isn't because of his actions, but yeah. he chose to do those things in the anime. But uh, uh, later on, when he starts revealing to me about the Death Note, um, one of the things that uh, I touch on is um, why Light is so obsessed with taking credit. Because, like, I. That is one of the notes that I, I noticed was part, or like does apply to the anime as well, because Light mm. himself in the anime is also very obsessed with getting credit for different reasons. Because mm. in the movie, Light Turner just, it's like, I killed these people, yeah! No, what, no, what no, no, this, this you wanna know strength. why he wants to take credit? Because he wants to get in Mia's pants. He wants pussy! <laughs> he wants pussy, and he gets it, so I guess I can't be too mad. <laughs> I think that is honestly the only reason. Because he yeah, didn't really. really care about it until Mia came in. Yeah, that's like the weirdest thing to me about it. Because like, th this bitch ratted you out. You and still want to get in her pants? And then she was like, hey man, you should take credit for all of the yeah. things that you did. And he's we like, can change the world. We can become <laughs> serial <laughs> killers. <laughs> we can change the world. And he's all like... We? And she's like, We? we. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, but like in the anime, it's more that Light wants to be seen as a hero, initially, of course. <laughs> he wants to be seen as a hero because he knows that the police can't do much, so yeah. he's like, I'm justice. Also, I can do these things that you can't. Yeah, and the, I'm helping the helpless. Also, yeah, and, it, and he's only really like, um, changes that view when he's challenged by, exactly, yeah. by, by L. Sorry, it's also hella weird that, like, later on when they're killing a bunch of people that they're also having sex. Yes, that's literally <laughs> a, a solo line in my notes, teen softcore porn scene. 
what the fuck is this yeah. bullshit right for now? Some, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason you want to see it. teen softcore porn go over serial killings. It's then. probably on Pornhub, you know? It's, it's, it's so movie. weird. It's so weird and out of place. And like, are they really getting kicks out of killing people? Yes. Jesus. Well, she They're is. Weird. Because she is the main force be- behind That's true. Yeah, all she's of... A- 100% a sociopath, my god. <laughs> yeah. She's the main force behind all of the things that happen with Kira. Because he doesn't really do anything. Mm-hmm. It's more like he is influenced by her, and therefore, you know, he does things. Rather than really just of his own of, uh, volition. Because of his He just wanted pussy. I was gonna say, he really just killed because of peer pressure. <laughs> yeah. He just... Like, uh, because of the, in the movie, there's only two situations, well, technically three situations, where Light uses the Death Note. One, because of peer pressure yeah. by Ryuk, Misa, or whatever. Mm. Two, to get into Misa's pants. Uh, and, excuse me, Mia? <laughs> uh, yeah, to get into Mia's Whoa, my pants. <laughs> and three, to save his own ass. Yeah. Those are the only three situations he used Death Note, and really, there's no good reason, except for saving your own ass, I guess, yeah, yeah. to use a Death Note. Yeah, I would, I would use it for pussy. Okay. Oh, that's that's <laughs> you. And you'll end up like Light Turner. <laughs> Damn, that's bro. true. Because like, I'm trying to think, like, what what exactly? If it isn't for the end, uh, for the adaptation, uh, the people who, well, you know, actually liked Death Note before the adaptation. Who are they trying to advertise it to? Like, like the teens that just suspecting. I honestly don't know. Probably for the Any, people. It doesn't really feel like the money. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't feel like there's a strong demographic that they're shooting for. You know, you know who I think it's for. Mm. I think it's for the people who also watch Riverdale. You know? <laughs> Actually, no, I could see that. Or in Twin Peaks. No, but I he... think it is honestly for those kinds of people. I I honestly completely disagree with you because the romance between Light and Mia is not the point of the movie. That's also true. It's completely not the point of the movie. The po- um, Cause that it's happens- It seem like it is. That happens in a montage, and it never really comes up again, up until the end. So yeah, until like the end. I, well, okay. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but this movie is so vapid, and so full, full of, of- itself, yeah. Yeah, full of itself. It really it, is full of itself. That it is- Especially aimed towards the teen, the tween demographic. It's for people who are like, I feel like I am self, and en- not saying that all tweens are self entitled, but I- I'm just saying, you know. Yeah. We're saying this is how Hollywood sees tweens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. actually, yeah, yeah, pussy. It really does. Yeah. yeah. So this is for those. It's marketed for what people think that tweens are like. They sure. are self entitled. They are. They only care about getting with girls or getting with and then and serial killings <laughs> and reputation obviously mm-hmm. and being edgy yeah that's and three of my things edgy. 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 so that's why I, I have to disagree which is which is why I think that this was made for those the, the tween demographics even if it's not even even it if it doesn't is, deliver even, yeah, at, even at if all, it doesn't hit the demographic. Yeah. yeah, even if it doesn't, you know, hit all of the sweet spots. I think that it was originally aimed for that demographic. I agree with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what you mean, but like I said, like it, it's completely not the point of the movie because th- there's that part of the movie, and then there's the part where. Uh, the part that I saw where I could see what they were trying to do and mm-hmm. uh, send the message because now that we're into it uh, when he becomes Kira he starts killing uh, he starts ch- changing the world basically yeah and like and, a cult of Kira starts spawning yeah and then like religious cult of Kira but like the thing I noticed is that like he starts um, killing like um, terror uh, actual terrorist groups yeah. like corrupt generals and he starts like targeting like War crime and stuff like that. Yeah, and um, uh, and the the message I uh, I uh, I can see, which I I got from uh, a YouTube another YouTube video, uh, mm-hmm. Mother's Basement, and he actually sort of liked the movie. Wow. All right. Yeah, and uh, he actually sort of liked the movie, and uh, the message I was trying to see, I uh, like I saw was like this is kind of like um what the movie is trying to say about like American intervention, basically. Yeah, I could see that being a thing. It's yeah. more they needed to play it up. Yeah, and the thing is, it just didn't play out. It was just part of that montage. Another thing playing into take the setting into account. Yeah, and that's one of the things. That, like, they could have used the setting for that. They could have. They just did it for some reason. They really didn't. 
they barely the, the setting was irrelevant. Yeah, and it, it, like that line with um that meeting where American intervention uh, really comes up at the end where he's like, I thought it could be so simple. I just killed the good guys and everything would be okay. Yeah. Good guys. But it doesn't. No, I just killed the bad guys. Sorry. <laughs> I just guys. Yeah. I just, oh, I just killed the bad killed Superman. Mm-hmm. I just killed the bad guys and everything would end up okay. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like that. It's not that simple. The world which that worth like. Yeah, which really mirrors like American intervention. Yeah. But that message is way too complicated for the team demographic. Yeah, <laughs> and it's way too complicated for how they like how they wrote the movie. Yeah, it, everything is so simplistic up to that point. It's like what? You have meaning in this movie, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. The, the thing, like, the movie is written so simple and so poorly that any message I'm trying to give is completely lost. Yeah. There's a message in it. Exactly. Yeah, see exactly. that? See that message I was trying to say. Um, you can see that if you were really, really, really paying attention and if you're really stretching, you got but try. you missed it completely. You well, no, I watched it. it as a movie without any, well, the only thing I knew about Death Note was you guys got, got these guy, this guy, and then you got L, and then Demon Dude's Kill Book, fuck yeah. But yeah, but even after you see at the movie, fuck yeah. No, like but even after seeing at that mo- in the movie, the movie, those ending lines should have told you the meaning of that movie. It should have told you like the true more of the movie. Mm-hmm. Well, but be- the movie? exactly no, you but, there is none. But there is no weight to those to to him saying that because you don't care about him. You don't care about. You don't care about anyone, honestly. Yeah. So you don't Does he care. Even care about himself. I honestly don't know. You could sort of care about L. Because you could have said because if if like. Light would have said that, like, maybe in the anime. I don't know why he would have said it. But, like, he wouldn't have. But, like, I'm just saying we would have cared more if he said it because we had more of an emotional attachment. Mm-hmm. And, like, it would have been better written a little bit better. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, like, I mean, you know, it, it's just there would have been more weight to his words rather than some bratty... Kid so with punk a punk ass, yeah, punk with a gun, basically. Yeah, yeah. it was just like so invisible, bad, powerful. Not all bad people <laughs> are bad people. Who are not killing? Killing all the bad people wasn't the right thing to do. <gasps> <laughs> killing but, people is a bad thing. Yeah, but continuing yeah. towards the movie, we still haven't really hit L. Yeah, I was gonna say that was the next point I was gonna bring up. I was skipping a bit. L was a. Uh, I really liked Doe initially. Like initially, yeah. When he's first introduced, a lot of his mannerisms are still the same. I didn't care about the race because he was playing him really well. Like he he did have the very drawn in like demure and like uh, demeanor. Demeanor. Thank you. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's like but, um, I don't know. He was kind of demure, <laughs> but like um, he. He did bear a lot of similarities. They kept the they kept the sugar thing that he like he was very obsessed mm. with sweets. Um, there okay. was one change. It wasn't really a change. It was just a weird thing that that they tacked on, where he's sitting in the the limousine with Watari, mm. who is apparently Watari, as they <laughs> they, they they said. But um, uh, they're they're sitting in the limousine. El just casually asks, "Will you sing me a song?" And he and Watari, of course, does. But then like. It's it so, never comes up again. It's it comes so up, awkward. It comes up once later in the movie, but it's not a plot point. So later on, when Light's controlling Watari via the Death Note, like uh, Watari's driving towards L's boarding school, and for some reason he's singing the same song that he sang to L. But it's not a plot point. He's just singing. It it's, doesn't mean it's anything. It's so awkward. Like he's when just, he sings it the first time, it's yeah. like. Right. I thought something was gonna happen. No, I just cuts away to the next scene. It's like okay. It's such a weird thing. Like, what was the point of that? Yeah. Thanks. Are, you, are you just trying to make it seem like Elle's eccentric? We didn't need that. We knew he was eccentric already. We want to show that uh, he's a fucking Watery weirdo. He's like a like a not a very talented singer. Yeah. <laughs> Watery. Yeah. You know, um, Cannot. But going movie. going briefly to L. Uh, yeah. I really, uh, for people who don't know, I really care about characters in movies. I feel that. Uh, I, I really care about how they develop, and I really care about how they are in, in the context of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I think L in the movie is completely different from L in the anime. I think... Like outright? Not even like 
it, like even well, including the intro or his intro. You even include the intro because there, there's a lot of subtle changes that really change how you see L from the movie to the anime. Because mm-hmm. L's mannerisms in the uh, in the anime mm-hmm. are, are weird, but they're a lot more subtle than they are in That's the movie. Very true. Because uh, in the movie. He shaves like constantly. He shaves like constantly. He like dumps his hand in candy. Just yeah, that's eats true. All. He, he did seem like a bit of a slob. Yeah, he yeah. He Which you like don't get from the anime. He isn't a slob. Everything he does is kind of measured. Yeah, like yeah. he like he doesn't in the anime. He like he looks he looks like a slob, but that's mostly because he doesn't care about his own health. Yeah, he's very organized in the anime. That's very true. But like in the um, but in the movie, you don't really get that. You don't get a lot of how. L thinks and how these mannerisms translate. Yeah. But um but here's the thing. I do like L in the movie because I, I like think him to a point. Uh, I do I again I agree with you. I like <laughs> to a point. I it's do like him to the movie. Point. Because I think that's a change that does not hurt the story too much. I agree. And it, in fact it helps it sort of helps justify his later actions. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I also it shows that he's a lot more brash. Than yeah, the L in the anime. Yeah, I also think it uh, it helps set up Light more as a protagonist because the person going directly against him isn't exactly a great guy either. Yeah, at least based upon his actions. Um, skipping to later in the movie where L uh, approaches Light in the cafe, in a very I- weird scene. <laughs> You're skipping a very a very is there important a part that scene. you want to touch on. There, there's really one part I want to touch on, mm-hmm. which is why I think. This the identity L- thing with the voice, the voice call. No, not, not that, that one. Because I thought that one was kind of weird. Uh, that, that one is weird. But there's very one one very important thing that I think makes a huge difference between this L and the L and anime. The conference. The conference. I thought so. Okay. It, L and anime uses another person in the conference to say the lines in order to confirm um, Kira's power, basically. Um, he uses he basically uses a dummy, says the name of the, of the dummy, and basically taunts uh, Kira, who is light, mm-hmm. um, into killing him. Uh, b- basically challenging his morals and um, taunting killing him, and then light does kill him, which confirms, uh, which for L confirms his power and shows the world that he is not, uh, that Kira is not powerful. The justice. Not his, well, he is all power, but he's not justice. He, he kills emotionally. Yeah. Because he, he literally just killed him He's off human. emotion. Teenage. But here's the difference in, in in the movie. In the movie, L himself actually goes out That's in true. the conference, says, Come kill me, Kira. Yeah, he goads him into trying to kill him. And then he doesn't and then um Kira can't kill him because he doesn't, doesn't know the, uh, his name. The reason why that's so majorly different is cause one, it L puts himself right yeah. in the line of fire. He which never do that. L in anime will almost yeah. never do that. Yeah, it, it kind of directly flies in the face of what L would do. Yeah. And like, like and it's not even until like episode like seven, mm-hmm. eight, maybe nine that we even see who the fuck L is because yeah. that's how protective he is of his identity. Yeah. And and two, late after that scene, L goes like I could I confer this power basically. He needs a name and a face. Yeah. Which he didn't get for me. Which, that is such a leap in logic. Right. <laughs> How would you know that? Yeah, he wouldn't. But that's such a leap in logic. But that's one of the things where, like, I feel like for his character, it kind of makes sense because, he, like I said, he's more brash. Yeah. He, those jumping logics would make more sense to him as opposed to uh, L in the anime, which he really cares about being correct. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have no idea how later on he was all like, hey, man, he's talking to the chief inspector guy, mm-hmm. which is Light's dad, and he's like, yeah, I think it's your son. <laughs> yeah, no. Like later on, he straight up goes to like Light's dad and be like, "Yeah, oh, that's a little before the cafe scene, actually." Yeah, I, I, I think it's your son. I'm pretty sure it's your son. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, "What? Where'd you get that from?" Did he have any interactions? With yeah, okay, he has. He has two reasons. Oh, uh, really? Only one, but he has two reasons why he thinks it's uh Light. One is because. Um, the he thinks the first kill, which he's mostly correct. He thinks the first kill involved um this uh this guy, and um oh no no actually I, I'm skipping ahead there. I thought so. Yeah, he might be. I'm skipping way ahead. No, he thinks that um what he knows is 
um, Kieran needs access to a police database in order to get most of his kills. Oh. And because of that, he uh, puts, um, uh, he tracks pretty much everyone in, uh, related to the police, including his son. Mm. The second reason why he thinks it's Light is because Light's dad goes up in the conference. That's later. Yeah, it was a separate conference, actually. Yeah, uh, la- later on. And, like, uh, and he doesn't die, basically. But I guess there's, no, there's another reason, which is... Like, that one 100% confirmed it. Because why wouldn't Kira kill him if uh, that's not his dad? Yeah, why wouldn't Kira... But there's a third reason, which is... Um, uh, light... Um, technically not light. Um, it's revealed that Mia killed all the spies that was tracking the people. Mm-hmm. All the suspects. Yeah, all, all the suspects. In order to cover their tracks. Which, when you think about it, doesn't really cover the tracks. It just rounds down the people. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, so we were right. Let's double down. <laughs> yeah, so we were right. It's someone related to the police. <laughs> That's why there was a subtle brilliance in the anime. Because not only does Light get suspicious off of himself, he gets the detective completely separated from Light. Like, they're not even anywhere near each other at this point in, in the anime, technically speaking, like... Alibi wise, right. he gets the, the detective to kill all the other people while clearing Light's own name effectively. Mm. Ah, so brilliant, man. But, um, Genius. yeah, right. 200 IQ. <laughs> uh, or is it? What is it? There's, there's, there's a lot of but stuff that, in here. But that's one of the examples of pe- characters not thinking their action through. Mia did not think her action through. Honestly, she never does. <laughs> she, she didn't think that, um, Cause she was like, it, um, cause she was talking to Light, like, oh, oh right, we should ki- we should kill the, pe- uh, the people who are tracking us, and Light is like, no, cause that would basically uh, confirm that it's me. And then Mia's like, no, I would kill the the spies who are tracking everybody. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, no, it would just round it down to your guys. It would it wouldn't eliminate you as suspects. So she's a thug with a gun. Effectively. Yeah, effectively. The, the death note was no. The Death Note was barely used as like a global force. It was used as a global force in one montage. Yeah. After that, it's yeah, basically it's used as a gun. Vocal. Yeah. It's so Silly. funny though, because she's like, hey man, we gotta kill your dad. And he's like, what? But that's my dad. She's like, <laughs> you hate your dad. Mia has yeah. no moral compass at all. She's such a fucking degenerate she's sociopath. Like a, yeah, she's like a total sociopath. No, but okay, here's, like, you got, here's the thing about Mia is. She is the true antagonist of this movie. She really is. She, um, they completely changed I know we said, I think character. we said Ryuk was initially, like, towards the beginning. Well, he's yeah, an antagonist. No, Ryuk is the, the true antagonist, but for the movie, Mia's the antagonist. Yeah. For the movie, Mia's the antagonist. She is the reason why Light has to go through so much trouble. <laughs> and she is the reason why Light is in this situation. Mm. She is the real problem for Light. Yeah. And really, she is the real problem of the movie. <laughs> but uh, going back to L in the cafe scene, uh, I got a strong OJ vibe from Light. Because <laughs> like, L just straight up confronts him saying, you're Kira. And like, Light just starts going like, okay, all right, so like, how do you think I did it? And, <laughs> if I was Kira, then... How do I do it? If I were Kira, here's how I would do it. It's like, this fucking scene is the most pointless bullshit right now. It's their way of trying to show like, the rivalry in the anime between Light and L and their like, mind battles. But it doesn't come off like that at all. It's just... Are they squabbling children? Because Light's just a fucking dumbass in this moment. <laughs> Where, like, he doesn't exactly explain how he does it, but... But it, it really goes, confirms that it's him, though. He goes full-on OJ. <laughs> <laughs> Basically saying, yeah, I'm Kira, but you'll never figure out how I do it. <laughs> oh. uh, I'm not... No, I'm not Kira, but if I was Kira... Yeah, here's how I would do it. And this was also the, the, the scene where I noticed something that's been prevailing about Elle the whole, throughout the whole movie. The character... The, the, the character... The person who plays Elle does a lot of puppy dog guys. He pouts a lot. <laughs> Like, what's up with that? I think he was meant to, like, appeal to the audience to look likable. He was that out. Yeah, but no, no but they're doing it terribly oh, no. if that's supposed to be make him likable. I really don't know what the hell he is and why I, he's chosen. Pouting, I didn't get it. He's also a... Isn't he a method actor? Yeah. Is he? I yeah, he's a, he's a method actor, which uh, a lot of people like method actors. 
I could or like like the acting. idea of method actors, but I feel like it sh- it should be controlled. <laughs> yeah, method acting can work, <laughs> but in certain situations, like in L's and like uh, Jared and Leto, Jared Leto's fucking Joker. No, you should not be. <laughs> you should not be a method actor. You should. Bad. No. <laughs> You should explain what method acting is to the people who don't know what method it is. Method acting is effectively when an actor receives a part and in order to immerse themselves into their role, they basically take on the role as their lifestyle. So Immersion. They can, so they can more understand how the character will act and think. And sometimes it's real bad. Heath Ledger used to do it and Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah. Heath Ledger did a good job with it though. And, like, it and Heath well. Ledger kind of died because of it. That too. What did Heath Ledger do? He, he was the Joker in Dark Knight. Yeah, he, he was the Joker really in Dark Knight, job. and then he literally turned himself insane doing that role. Yeah. Purposely, but he did it, and I feel like that's one of the reasons why he... It should be controlled. Yeah. It can be really bad. But, uh, what's it? I don't have a whole lot of notes between that and my next point, so I'm just going to skip to my next point. Uh, what, in between that point was the, the me and the FBI thing, which, mm. is, was, which was really stupid, as we've covered. But uh, one thing that's a huge blaring plot hole that pisses me off, because it's been shown, you need a name, full name, and a face. And suddenly Light right, looks up Watery and writes his name in the death note, and for some reason that works. What the fuck? Why does it work? It makes no sense, because for one, Watery's not even supposed to be his real name. Yeah, it's a pseudonym, so... And then furthermore, it's just the first name, even if it is real. So and Light doesn't even know what Watcher looks like. <laughs> exactly. Wait, hold on. No, he, no, they found... Well, he kind of just like deduced it off of like some news articles where it's like, Oh, that, that guy must be Watery walking with this guy. What if you legally change your name or like you were transgender If your and... name is legally changed, then it still works. As long as the legal name is... It has to be the name you go by. Exactly. Oh, okay. Not right. just like a nickname, like... Your own Like sure. L. Yeah. It can't be a nickname like L, or like Kev, or Pat, or whatever. It has to be your le- your name that you go by. Like, if we wrote Ben Ho for you, it would not work. It had to be Benjamin. But yeah, that one, that one bit really pissed me off. And then it also, shortly after they, they do that scene, it introduces a, a very arbitrary rule that introduces a new plot hole later on where you can take back the writing someone's name in, an, in the note, but you can only do so once, and it's by burning the page. The page? The page that the name was written on. And, and why, why is that a thing? Why, why is that a thing? It is a thing to They're take trying... back their action. Exactly. It's so that they can make Light still seem like a hero. Is that like only in the it's movie? Only, yeah, only in the, in the movie. movie. That's not even close to a thing. Well, in the pilot for Death Note, there is something called the Death Eraser, which has Death a similar Death. effect. Yeah, it's the pilot. They took it out for the actual show. But in the anime, in the manga, there's nothing even similar. But uh, Wait, uh, I want to go on that point, though. Um, if Light was smart... In the movie, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and I was smart in the movie. What he easily could have done, e- even ignoring the fact that Watchery should not have worked, yeah. he could have just wrote, "Watchery shoots light and kills himself." Right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. Oh, Watchery shoots L and kills himself. <laughs> he has to kill himself. <laughs> Watchery shoots L and kills himself. He could have easily done that. Like, yeah, like even if without just writing L, could just say the detective knows. Yeah. Yeah. Because like one of the things that also really irritated me about the scene is how Light is stupid enough to have Watery report to Light's own cell phone <laughs> instead of like a dummy phone, a pay phone, literally anything that's not connected to and him. There's, there's no consequences to this either. And no, it, it doesn't backfire in the slightest. It's the stupidest, like, how can we call this guy this smart? He's not smart. Maybe Wait. that's his work phone. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. It it's still, still connected crazy. to him. Yeah. The main thing is, like, if someone were to find out, it could be easily traced back to light, and there'd be no investigations. Like, this guy is clearly Kira. There's no other person could possibly be at this point. It's just so stupid. He doesn't cover his tracks. And in within my notes, like, early on in the movie, uh, L calls Light a particularly bright kid. And in my note, I write, Light has no idea how to cover his tracks. A particularly bright kid indeed. <laughs> But, uh, He's super smart, yo. Yeah. <laughs> 200. He, he does homework, yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good boy. But I'm gonna 
unless you want like to cover something between it, uh, I'm gonna skip yeah. over straight to the yeah to the to the homecoming homecoming scene. Basically, the end of the movie. Yeah, basically. Uh, so Mia reveals to Light that he she wrote her his name into the death note in order to blackmail him into giving her the death note. And the way he, she does it is by saying, um, I tore out the note with Watari's name so that you couldn't burn it. That way, I could burn your name so I could save you. Plot hole there. We never established if it's once per notebook or once per keeper or any sort of rule beyond that. Because if it's once per notebook, how do we know for sure no one's done that before? Um, yeah. It's clearly been used a lot because early on in the movie, they flip through the pages and there's like bajillion names sprawled in there. Yeah. Bajillion names, different languages. Yeah. Like... And then if it's once per keeper, it still doesn't make sense because if Mia has the ownership of the note, Light can still burn Walter's name. So, what? This, this so we just killed a person for no reason. Exactly. Hmm. This scene makes no sense. It's also around this time that uh, L basically has Watari killed to, in order to protect himself. Yep. Which, wow, that's so out of character for, for L. Like, L and Watari. Right. Yeah, L and Watari in the anime have a much closer relationship than that. Like, he wouldn't just have him killed. But, like. I totally forgot that was a thing. <gasps> yeah. But, um. That's how bad it was. So, like, yeah, so Le L has. Watery killed, and in that moment, like, he's just broken. Like, suddenly he's a completely different character. He's like the Terminator. Exactly. To like, like, he just gets stupid angry. He pulls out this Men in Black-esque gun that, like, glows for some reason, even though it's just a normal pistol. It glowed. Yeah, it has, it like, has a like, red a, glow. Yeah, yeah, it has, like, a ball on it that glow that glowed, like, really bright. It's like, what? what and it, it's still a normal pistol. I mean. It's just a gun that glows. It makes no sense. So pointless. And in that moment, he just like rushes out of where he is, and like he gets into a, like a police car. He, I think he steals a police car. Yep. And then he just fucking just breaks several traffic laws trying to find light. It's like the police are is, after him now. And then... what the fuck is happening anymore? And then, uh, like shortly after that scene, like I'll con uh, corners light. In one of my most... The only part in the movie that just, like, pissed me the fuck off. Uh, kind of akin to your Why Wouldn't You Just Have Watery Right Kills L. Uh, or, sorry, Light. Watery Kills L. Uh, so he corners him, like, in an alleyway. And, like, some random dude comes out from the back of a restaurant. And uh, and he figures out that Light is Kira. Something. Because... Oh. No, it's because L says this is Kira. Oh right, yeah. Yes. And he random... believes him so readily, but that's fine. Was it just some random cultist. dude? Yeah, just some random dude. Yeah. Not even like someone that Light wrote the name of in his death note to make him do stuff. Oh. But like, so he knocks L out, and then he, of course he drops the gun. So Light takes the gun and leaves. Why wouldn't you just fucking shoot him right then and there? If your goal has this whole time to have been kill L, why wouldn't you just shoot him? Cause he's a dumbass. You know, uh, I I can see why he wouldn't. Uh, bad reason, but I can see why he wouldn't, and that's because he's likes a little bitch. Oh, I was gonna say because he's he himself is not a killer. He doesn't want to like have blood on his hands directly. Oh well, yeah, so no, that uh, pretty much. Cause uh, light would be a little bitch to actually do it himself. Yeah, but fucking give him the chance, he wouldn't get caught. Light in the enemy. Oh, he would have done that in a heartbeat. Like he is a cold, calculating killer in the anime. I, I just imagine like what light, oh uh, what light in the anime we've done. He'll be like he kills him. He's like oh thank you so much. What's your name? And he kills him there. Just cover tracks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He covers his tracks so many times in the anime. Even when he doesn't need to, he still does it. In the event, it draws back to him. But like, so early, uh, a little earlier on in the movie, they they light and me uh, go to a fucking Ferris wheel for whatever fucking reason, it, so they can set up this scene. So Light has Mia meet him at the Ferris wheel, for some reason, because of his master plan. <laughs> and then so a, a series of events happen where uh, he, uh, quote unquote, offers the death note to Mia if she lo like the the condition was if you love me you won't take the death note. She takes it. And not only does she take it, she take she steals it from him. Without his not like without his consent, effectively. So he's distracted by the police, and then she just swipes it from his hands in that moment. And then apparently, as part of his light's plan, 
that the Ferris wheel just suddenly starts breaking. He's so smart. And in that moment, a new plot hole was created. <laughs> because it's shown that Ryuk's the one to be destroying the Ferris wheel because he does this like clear like motion that he's tearing down the Ferris yeah. wheel. Yeah. Which begs the question, is Ryuk under the influence of the Death Note or is he doing this for funsies? And then I, sin I sincerely uh, think, even though it is a plot hole in the movie, I sincerely think the movie's trying to say that it's Ryuk is the one doing all the killings. That's what I thought too. But then I also thought in the beginning of the movie with the bully, where that death note, the death note, uh, that uh, final destination chain of events, yeah, was that Ryuk's doing? Cause yeah, they didn't I, I really honestly, show it. I honestly think that's what they're trying to show in the movie. I could see that, but they don't play it up enough, so. I don't know. Yeah, we, we, won't, we won't know for sure. Until they say something. Well, I don't know. I they it. will. It's uh, stupid. But, uh, yeah, so Mia falls to her death, Light falls to his death. <coughs> and then, what's it? Apparently it was part of his master plan that these criminals find him, keep him alive, put him in a medically induced coma. And then, for some reason, he just comes straight out to his dad in the at, on his hospital bed well his dad found out sort of yeah it, that like that that felt like a leap in logic to me like yeah yeah light stole the newspaper clipping of the guy that stole that killed his mother and his dad's wife but i don't think that's that weird like <laughs> i'll just be really angry at exactly the guy. how long is weird to have that clipping that too well, it's not that fucking be, weird he's just hung up on the you. death of his mother which they established early on in the movie. Yeah, so like, okay, what a leap in logic. And he's just like, and, like and, and he just like confesses right there. You really want to know? He's like, well, here's how it happens. He's like, you caught me. And then I'll the tell note, you everything. I'm dirty, damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's straight up. He tells, he tells him everything. He tells him how death will work. Play and, for play. <laughs> and he tells him how he got out of that situation by getting a bunch of these criminals it, that so happened to be in the local area. Well, technically, only two criminals. No, because they got he got like at least three, right? Uh, he got the mailman to um mailman doctor. Uh, the doctor because the mailman was the same person that that delivered the death note, but I don't remember who the first person was. The, the, the one to pull him out of the water. Oh, okay. the doctor. That's yeah, the, uh, doctor. the the doctor. I guess the one. Uh, I guess it was only two it was people. Just the, yeah, wait a minute. It was just the two, and yet he spent like fifteen minutes writing at the table, like before he ran away from the problem. Well, he also coming, wanted whatever. to write the, uh, down the fact that in his steed of his coma, the um, the um, that's true. Oh the, yeah, he would have had to write two more names in yeah. addition. Yeah. The two people that the mailman kills in his name. Yeah, yeah. but um, mailman does his work, which for there was no in, point in doing because yeah. like kind of just outs himself. Yeah, yeah. Cause like the whole point of that, I can only assume, was so he could cover his tracks. But then he outs himself immediately after he wakes up. Well, great, great it to his dad. True. But like, he still outs himself. It's stupid. <sighs> but the, the, the entire note he writes kind of bugs me. Cause like, one of the, cause I, I quoted it word for word. Mia Sutton is killed the moment she accepts a death note from her boyfriend. I have two things with that. One, she didn't accept it. She literally stole it out of his hands. Actually, I have three things with that, but uh, he, she stole it out of his hands. In addition, he, his condition was, if you love me, you won't take the note. But she took the note, so she doesn't love him. Are they really still boyfriend-girlfriend? Like, is that still, like, death note binding? Maybe she I loves the book more than she loves him. That's, you know, that's it. I, I, I guess it depends on the definition of the writer. Exactly. I guess, I guess like still thinks they're boyfriend-girlfriend. <laughs> Furthermore, into that, um... What's it? It's never stated, and it never comes up in the anime either, if the keeper of the Death Note is affected by it. Mm. So, like, in saying she accepts the Death Note from her boyfriend, should he not be uh, forced to offer her the Death Note and give it to her? Because uh, the condition is that she accepts it, so it would have to be offered. The hard part about that um, that death mm -hmm. in particular is that that death is the only death in anything death note related that has an if then statement. Exactly, that was another thing. I didn't even know you could use if then statements. Could you? No. No. No, because it never comes up. Everything but, like writes the people are forced to do. They yeah. have no choice so, in the matter. Okay. They can do it. So basically, it's it's it might not be an if then statement. It's that. 
should she? And then, like, she... But that's still an if. It, yeah. yeah. Should she, which is also if. Which yeah. doesn't make sense, because they've never done an if before. It's a well, weird... So it's a weird, unique situation to the movie that doesn't make sense to me. Well, that's because, like, only people who've seen the anime will understand that that's not a normal thing. But people who that's watch the movie... That's technically true. No, but... No, even... Even if that's not a normal thing, that still doesn't make sense in the context of the movie. That's true. Because every name that goes into that book should die. So, ha- does having an if-then statement work? We'll believe We will never know truly. <laughs> because in this case, it did technically work because she still died. But uh, another thing about it was, as the Ferris wheel mysteriously collapses, was his phrase- phrasing. It's not mysterious! You get it! <laughs> we all saw it! Well, I, I guess it's mysterious to everyone else. That's true. It's he is weird. invisible. And then the one thing that didn't make sense to me physically how it happened was she pulls the page with my name on it. I have a couple things with that, too. How the fuck did she do that? How did she grab onto the Death Note engine just so happened to pull a single page? It's one of those... It's fate! It's one... No, it's not fate. It's one of those things where, like, it, it's supposed to be manipulated by the Death Note. Yeah, it's just manipulated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But those then the other sweaters, things, those super details. But then sudden, and then also the thing that confused me with, with it was, he says my name specifically. Mm. Who the fuck is my? Like he's he was he's been using okay. boyfriend. Like he could have earlier he could have just said Mia Sutton is killed the moment she accepts a do- death note from me. So why even bother with boyfriend? What's with the syntax here? Why change it? No, because the reason why it's written that way is because Light needed to avoid using his own name I know. in the book. It, it's, one of those, it's one of those things in the movie that you could tell that somebody cared enough in the movie to follow all the rules. For example... Kind of. <laughs> no, no, he's, well, here's the thing. Well, with the exception of that one, literally it's been consistent that, uh, at least in the movie, where Light does not ever write his own name in the, uh, in the book. Uh, when Mia kills all the FBI people, she writes it so everyone will die in a specific way. But one of them is not anywhere near, not anywhere close to where he should die, so he just dies normally by a heart attack. Mm-hmm. And the fact that um, um, that later on in the movie, at the very end, uh, near the end, when Elle discovers the Death Note, where um, he discovers a page that Mia has, um, uh. Mia actually writes down the instructions of how to use a death note because of how the FBI direct. Uh, oh, uh, wait, the, did she write that? I don't know. No, because the, the FBI, she, he, she, uh, she had to write that the FBI uh, off, uh, person had to write the names yeah. of. Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah, had to write the names of the other FBI people telling them and picture the faces yeah. uh, As in it death goes note. Along, I think, is how she phrased it. Yeah, and, um, and how they died. And that's how L learns how she uses Death Note, and that's how uh, L knows how to use the Death Note at the end. Mm. You know how to use the page. Oh, yeah. Somebody cared in this movie. Obviously not everybody. <laughs> Obviously not the main writer. But somebody cared in this movie to put those details in. There's also, like, the rule is that it has to be physically possible, but it still really bugged me, because the la- it, and the, the, the page with his name on it, and it is ultimately consumed by fire. Mm. And the way that plays out is that it just flaps through the wind for a while till it finds magically finds its way to a barrel with fire in it. Like, it is physically possible, but my god is that deus ex. My god, that's insane! It just really bugged me. I don't know. It, it's, it's just one of those days where it's just like, for the convenience of the movie, it just had to happen. Exactly. Um, I mean, like, I, I have a, like, a small note about, like, he's confesses everything, which is completely pointless why he's trying to hide the note if he's just confess everything. Um, but the very ending where, like, Elle's, like, about to write his name in the note, or someone's name in the note, or do something with the note, just, what's the point? Why, why do that? Just, because why sequel bait us like this? It's not really sequel bait, or well, at least I think it's not really sequel bait. I think it's more for the ending to be left ambiguous. Because Elf finds a note and he knows how to use it now. And it's implied that Elf is going to use the, um, the Death Note to kill Light. And it's left ambiguous whether he does it or not. But it's most likely he did that anyways. We don't, we will never You can't know. say for sure. Yeah. Do we really want it's to? It's up to. Because, like, based on his mental state, 
maybe he wrote his own name. Yeah, and it also shows like a, like a slight shot where like he thinks about his actions. But we'll, we'll never truly know. Yeah, uh, there's like there's no movie in a. Now you really got much a rant about show. it. Do you feel better now? I missed some stuff I wanted to say because, but I didn't touch on it because it was going to take too long. Better. I feel a little better now. Uh, my very last note, which I, doesn't really apply to any one moment in the movie, almost every song used in the movie throws off the tone of the movie. Ah, yes, the 80s soft rock. So much 80s soft rock, and it always throws it off. Whenever whenever you think of Death Note, you would think of 80s soft rock, mm-hmm. yes. Exactly. No, 80s soft rock. But yeah. Just, ugh. Uh, it kills me every time I see that ending where um, Chicago is the power... Parallel, just play. <laughs> yeah. And just, I was just saying, I'm like, what's happening? What, what's happening in this movie right now? That's not Chicago. Power of Love? Is that Chicago? Oh, what was it? it was power, a... of, the power of Love is. I forget. But that's not <laughs> Chicago. Chicago was used um, at the Ferris wheel. Yeah, I was talking about that one. What was, what's the song for Chicago? It's. um. I forgot. It's not a. I don't know. I, the Power of Love was Air Supply, I believe, right? Something like that. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, when the Chicago song came up, well, uh, Mia was falling off. Just, what's happening right now? But yeah, my personal rating for the movie is a 1.5 out of 5. That 0. 0.5 solely comes from Willem Dafoe Ryuk, <laughs> which was, ooh, such good casting. But, well, what do you what do you think of the movie, Ben? Since you also seen it, I don't want to think anything about it anymore. <laughs> well then. Yeah. <laughs> I still um, think about it a lot. My, my personal rating is a 2 out of 10. 2 out of 10. So yeah. 1 out of 5. 1 that out makes, of 5 is more. On your skill, that makes mine a 3. It doesn't? Yeah, because it just double it, and that, that's how you get my, my score for a. Yeah, because his. Out of 10. Oh, yeah. Out of 10. Yeah, so. That would make mine a 3. 2.5 out of that's 10. That's actually pretty fair, though. No, I think I might, yeah. On a scale of 1, three, one to 10, I might actually give it a 3. I have seen worse movies. Because mm, my, my problem with this is, like, I get what the movie's trying to do. Or mm. I think I get what the movie's trying to do. It just doesn't do it. It, yeah. it misses, not only does it miss the point of the original source material, and not only does it fail as a movie, the more you think about it, even on second viewing, what I, I think about the, me, um, the meanings it's trying to portray, it is completely lost by the end. Yeah. It, it fails at everything it's trying to do. And the only reason I'm not giving it a 1 out of 10 is because at least it is shot competently. That, yeah, that's one of the reasons. Yeah. yeah, and at least half the cast is acting well. Because <laughs> I think Elle is acting well. I think Ryuk is acting well. I think Watari's not bad. And I think everyone else is garbage. <laughs> Pretty bad movie. Yeah. Highly do not recommend. <laughs> uh, I recommend watching with friends, knowing that it's a bad oh, movie. Dude, I mean, I recommend watching any bad movie with friends. I, uh, and it, it's one of those movies that you can watch and like you could, you could think about it as like what's wrong with this movie, specifically as an adaptation. Yeah, because like. The, the worst part about it is that we are constantly comparing it to the original, uh, to the original series. Unfortunately. This, it's what we have to do, because why, why would you make it a death yeah. movie otherwise? And the fact, the fact is that these, even though Light Turner is not Light Yagami, and Mia Sutton, Sutton. Yeah. Yeah, is not Misa, they are nowhere close to what they're supposed to be in, in the anime. Yeah, they're and even not comparing them. They're even not comparing really them. They're shitty characters. They're shitty characters. Because they like, don't have any progression. Because they, com- they completely contradict themselves. Because Light, um, Light Turner is supposed to be a smart kid. And then... He's a lot of stupid shit. And he does stupid shit. And Mia is supposed to be like... I, what is her character? She is, she find, she's just a degenerate. She's... She's a sociopath. She's a sociopath. She's very... She's she's meant to be a hugely bad influence on light, really. Because she, she's a sociopath obsessed with trying to get the death note, but... It, we don't know why. She just we don't, wants to kill. Yeah, <laughs> we, she doesn't have a reason. She doesn't have a purpose. She just does things. She's out for blood. She exists. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's just one of those things where... 
this movie fails on nearly every front. And I can't... I can barely suggest watching it. I, if you're interested in watching Death Note, and you might want to watch the movie, uh, I, have, I have two ways of looking at it. Do you want your experience to get better as you go along? Watch the movie, then the anime. If you want, if you want it to get worse, then of course, anime the movie. So anyway, I think, um, and I do this thing every time I watch a bad movie, is that what would I do in order to make, it, it, if I was to make this movie? Oh man, that could be like a bonus, <laughs> like we're talking family episode alone. <laughs> well, I, I was There's a lot of changes that I would make. Well, not, not changes to, to the movie specifically, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about changes in general. Like, if you were to make a Death Note movie, how would you structure it? Oh, like, yeah. How, I know how would you, you do it? Like, um, like, for me, if I was to make a Death Note movie, it would not ha it would not have to do anything with the original cast or character. I agree. It would just be just another that, Death uh, Note somewhere if, else. Just what if it had taken place in America with different people? No, not even taken place. It would. It, it could even be like the same universe, but someone else just has a Death Note. Oh, dude, I've been so down for that. <laughs> yeah, because the universe Death Note. Fuck. No, because they established in the anime that there are at least there can be up to seven or six Death Notes. Six. Six, death six notes. active death notes. There can be more, but everything after the six won't have effect. Yeah, the uh, six death notes in the world at a time. So you can easily have another death note in the world. It's true. So um, it never really comes up. There's only yeah. at max three at once. Yeah, it, it never comes up, but um, you can easily tell another story where another death note lands in America, and someone has it, and they use it. They can even be inspired by the Kira Yeah. I don't know, it's, it's one of those things where like, si that's simple enough, it's so distant from the anime that you can make it its own thing. And you can even have stupid characters in it, because these characters could be meant to be stupid. Actually, yeah, like I was just thinking like, if they literally just changed everyone's names, like outright, like not even say, oh, this guy's like, this guy, this woman's Misa or Mia. Like if they were just complete, because like... They don't act enough like their anime manga counterparts that you can definitively say, oh, this is them. Mm. They could have easily just changed the names completely, and I might have been more okay with the movie. I mean, it would still be a really bad movie, mm. but I wouldn't have been as offended. <laughs> I, I agree with the offended part. I don't think it would be a, um, a good change because they still say, like, smart, even though he's not. <laughs> he's not very young. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where they still try to characterize these characters into something they're just not. They, they force characterization. Yeah. I think we should wrap it up here. I know that I know everyone else has other topics that we're gonna do, but I guess we got in other episodes. We're like two hours. <laughs> we are. We're hitting that two hour that mark. We have. Yeah. So this is the we're talking friendly Death Note podcast. <laughs> it's primarily Death Note. I've been wanting to talk about this for well, a long time. Adaptations in general. And uh, two are down for the count. Yes, two are very, very sleepy. So I guess next time we'll go into everyone else's topic. Because uh, I know Sarah had a topic about culture that she wanted to get into today, but we did not. I do have a lot to say about that too. Yeah. Uh, ben, I don't, I don't remember if you told me your topic. I'm not going to talk about it until next time then. Of course. Okay. I mean, That's fine. I mean, it's going to be for it. secret. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sequel baiting there. Sequel. Whoa. Find out next time. Say find out next time. I have a couple topics I want to talk about. And Alan, if you go, if you want to join us next time, you can bring a topic of your own. I may or may not appear. Who knows? Whoa. Whoa. Find out next time. <laughs> find out next time. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, the next thank episode of... So thank you for joining us. This has been episode two of We're Talking Friendly. I hate that. See you next time. Bye. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go.